Hello everyone, Amanda here. Thanks for joining me. So I have been busy making these papers. Um, I, are, I have been putting a couple of sheets of these original prints in my kit and I've also been digitalising these and putting them for sale in my Kofi site. But I thought uh, quite a few people have asked me how I make them and I'm not one to get keep information so I'm going to share with you how I made them. Now this is not my idea, lots of people do it but I'm just sharing you how. And my friend Karen Warren um, explained how to do this um, as she sent me a few and she also sent me the secret ingredient you need to make these beautiful patterns. So let me just quickly show you some of the results that I've got. Um, you'll get varying results and I'll tell you... Um, how you'll get varying results. You'll get varying results depending on the strength of the solution you use okay, and on your own patience because the longer you leave them to dry the better the results okay and they are better if they are left to air dry okay in fact I can't really see how you could do it any other way successfully you've just got to be patient and I can normally make um, this batch took me about it's it's time consuming because I you know you've got to let them air dry so pick a nice day um, to do it and I depending on how many mats you've purchase um, you can do two per mat so um, I can do about 18 or 20 and then it takes maybe three hours to air dry depends on your climate if you live somewhere nice and sunny they'll dry faster um, so I can normally do two batches in one of our British days <laughs> um, so they are time consuming to make which is why I've digitalized them um, and you can purchase them to print out if you so desire so I'll just quickly fl flip through this is my favorite one and the detail that you can get on these is beautiful okay quickly flip through the different ones I like this one with the flowers there so what do we use them for well I use them in my journals so all you need to do with these fold it in half and you've got a ready-made journal page okay or if you make smaller journals then you'd cut that in half and then fold that in half and get uh, more sheets okay uh, they add a beautiful element there's another one to your journals something different um, it's something hand done um, and I think it just adds value to your journals uh, I don't mean monetary value I mean decorative you know just value in general okay we just quickly flip the through these, these are the other half of the, but yeah, so I got quite good results on this one because I used quite strong solution. And um, this one um, is very similar, but this was done on a different day and that solution's lighter. So you can see the variations in the colour as well, okay? I darkened it. So I like to use tea rather than coffee, but to get the darker result, what I did was I used tea and coffee. <laughs> In the same in the same solution. So these are the paler ones. So these are just tea. These, okay. So just showing you so you can see the difference. And then that one I've added coffee. Okay. So if you want them darker, add coffee. If you like them light, use tea. Right. So I will show you how I make my solution, <clears throat> so that you know everything from the needle to the thread. So I use this old jug, and then I save it in my garage, and I just use this for tea dyeing and coffee dyeing now or anything else so this is a two litre um, jug or it goes up to just over three out three pints okay depending on how you do your measurements um, I just fill it up about three quarters I don't really measure it so maybe two and a half maybe two and a half pints okay or um, 1.4 litres <clears throat> hot water and so in that solution there about two and a half pints I put three tea bags good quality tea bags Tetley tea or Yorkshire tea are the best <laughs> and I also put two spoons of just regular instant coffee it's freeze ground um, Nescafe okay so you don't need any fancy um, ground coffee or anything like that um, but the freeze dried is a little bit stronger than the powdered so just cheaper coffee okay and then leave it to see to you know um, to stew for a while then I have an old baking tray uh, well old roasting tray I'll just show you so this is an old one and um, I save this for all of my tea dyeing and this is how I soak my papers if I'm soaking them so I've uh, done a solution here it's a little bit less than normal normally the tray would be more than uh, half full 
and I also take some of the solution to one side and put it in a spray bottle. Okay, I leave the tea bags in right up until I'm ready to start and do my dyeing because while you're leaving it in there it's it's continuing to stew so then give them a squeeze and take it out so like I say normally there's more solution here and then I normally do them in my garden I've got two quite large garden tables that are maybe I don't know maybe a metre and the glass so I put them both together and then what I've got here underneath this material here this is a cheap shower curtain so I purchased this from Asda in the UK I think it was about two pound um, it, so it's massive and it's waterproof so I put that over my table so that my table doesn't get stained with tea or coffee and also you know it's an outside table so it's not spotlessly clean so I put this over you can always throw them in the washer if they get stained or dirty just throw them in the washing machine so that's the solution okay now for the paper I just use standard copy of paper so this is about 75 GSM, 80 GSM whatever because you don't need your thicker more expensive paper because when you've tea dyed it and then it's dried it gives it texture and it makes it feel thicker the only thing you need to do is be very careful when you're dunking it and I'm going to show you how I do it to avoid it getting ripped okay let me just move this because I'm going to show you the secret ingredient so the secret ingredient are these decorative mats now these are plastic okay so your paper won't stick to them and then if because you're using a shower sheet a shower curtain underneath um, you know it's not going to stick um, so these are just highly decorative plastic mats now you'll get better results with ones that have got more holes so if you look at this one there's not a lot of holes there it's quite solid so that one doesn't give a brilliant brilliant print but it's still nice you get those roses okay same with this one we've got quite a large area that's filled in there so it's not going to be as good and have a look at the back as well because where you've got holes punched through on the back that's where your pattern's going to be so that center one there the holes are very punched through and so you get a bit of a pattern but it's not fantastic and um, but they're still good this one's brilliant. This one leaves beautiful pattern with these with the arches. The flowers don't really show, but the arches do. Now these ones are really good. These ones I've got a lot of decorative elements that are punched out, and you can see in the back. Okay, so don't just look at them at the front. Have a look at them at the back. Now this one in particular gives me a fantastic, fantastic um, result, and that's because in between there as well each one of those it's almost like fine plastic mesh so each one of those has got tiny individual holes all the way through and then these flowers so you can see here how it's punched all the way through the mat okay this one gives me really nice results as well because there's lots of lovely big holes can you see the big holes there see it better there see how those are even bigger holes so then I get really good results with that one this one gives me probably the best results out of all of them um, so if you look on the back you can see how it's got quite large punched out holes on the back so that one gives me and all the way around the border so that one gives me a fantastic result and these do as well same because it's punched out all the way through especially this one I think this is actually the next best one because these are punched all the way through okay and then this one gives me a lovely result as well with, with the flowers on. So you'd source these um, in, I don't know, markets. Um, you know, I mean, these are not the kind of thing that I normally use. I don't really use placemats. Um, but yeah, I don't know, pound shops, dollar shops. Um, I know like whenever I go down to London there's loads of shops um, you know when you're driving in that sell everything from buckets to suitcases to you know those kind of shops that sell everything um, that's you know a, a, probably a good source for them so each mat will um, you're going to put two sheets of paper and then one mat will stretch over two is what I'm trying to say so how to not get your paper ripped when you're dunking it and getting it wet hold it very carefully by each corner don't try and pick it up just by one corner hold it gently two fingers and a thumb um, on each side okay 
Now normally I'd have more fluid in here because obviously I'd make a bigger batch but I wasn't wasting it. I don't even waste tea or coffee me. Okay so get it quiet so it's nice and dark and it's nice and soaked. I don't think you can do this quickly by just spraying it and drying it. I think you need the air drying to, for a successful result. Okay so then you put one on your mat like so okay and then just tap it you don't want any creases and you don't want it where it's bubbling you want it quite smooth on your surface there i'm just going to quickly do the other one off camera because my desk's not uh, big enough to hold it all <laughs> not got enough space as i say i normally do this out in the garden because also i can't stand the smell of the stuff it's horrible i'll have to open my windows when i've done okay let me just move that tray Okay. So then you you know if you just be careful it shouldn't rip but if it does you know it's not the end of the world it doesn't really matter lay them so that they're fairly lined up or best you can it as I say it don't need to be perfect then get a good mat so for me it'd be the square one or this one and then face that making sure you've not got any creases face that with the pattern side down so the underneath is upwards and you just lay it across then you press it in okay press it right in so that it's nice and flat to the paper uh, it's also helping um, get any air bubbles out of the paper but that needs to be really flat to your paper really stick it down it's wet so it's going to almost like because it's plastic it's almost going to suction to your paper and then what I do, and this is what I did on my second try when I got really, really good results. After doing that, I then went over and sprayed with my sprayer and some more solution. So you're almost double wetting it. But this is how I got really, really good results. Okay. You can, if you want, wash your mats in between, wash your sheet in between etc i'll just give them a quick wipe and then i store them in the garage where it doesn't matter okay so that's what you do now i can't and then obviously you leave it and just leave it for a minimum i'd say a minimum of three hours don't keep going oh i wonder if it's done and peeling it up because every time you do that you know um you're spoiling the results patience is the answer and trust you and me patience is not one of my virtues but it works leave it for at least three hours just keep an eye on it if it's breezy outside you know i have this on my table and then the, the sheet and i um, peg it all the way around the lip of the table i peg it down so that doesn't lift you need to keep an eye and make sure your mats aren't lifting in the wind and your paper's not blown away uh, which is why i do it on a nice day but yeah just make sure you've got plenty of this on okay and then keep going you know give yourself a big space I don't know, you might have some flags in your garden, you might have a garden table or otherwise do it on your floor and leave it overnight if you don't mind the smell on your craft room floor, your kitchen floor, wherever with this prote uh, protective mat and leave it overnight if it's in the garden it'll dry faster because obviously you know you've got the air circulating more alright so then you do that and then you would keep going until you either run out of space or in my case I run out of mats you know, I can only do so many because I've only got so many mats. But for each mat, you'll get two sheets. Okay? Um, so there you go. That's all of the details. It's everything you need to know from the needle to the thread of how to get these beautiful decorative papers. Okay? And if you don't think you can be bothered doing it, <laughs> it's worth doing, trust me, because it's lovely and it's very satisfying. I will do it, put them out in the morning, go and check them at lunchtime, bring them in at tea time. It's not, it doesn't take long. Um, it's just the patience of leaving them to dry. If you can't do that, follow my Kofi uh, link in the description box below. And I've digitalised some and you can purchase them and print them out. Alright, hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.